Let's talk about if statements in C. So if statements are a way to optionally execute a block of code. And most languages have if statements or something very similar to them. So here we're going to say int x is equal to 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to write an if statement that's going to check if x is equal to 2 and then print out x is equal to 2 if it is. And then we'll do a printf down here that just says, you know, if done, just to denote that the if statement's done. So the way this works is we make a variable that's an integer x called, uh, that's, that's called x, and we set it equal to 2. And then we check here, is x equal to 2? So this condition is something that's going to come with our if statement here, and we're checking if x is equal to 2. If this condition is true, we execute this block of code here. And we're going to print that x is equal to 2. If it's not equal to 2, then control flow is going to drop down to the next statement after the if statement, which is going to be this one. And we just print that the if is done. So let's just try this out here. We're going to say gcc dash out demo dot c, and we'll say dash dot slash demo, and we get x is equal to 2, and if done. So what happened was, you know, x is equal to 2, so we print f that x is equal to 2, and then we drop down here, and the if statement is done. If we say here, though, that x is equal to 3, or maybe 3, yeah, we'll say 3, doesn't really matter, but we'll say 3. Now all we get is if done. So what happened in this case is that this condition is not true. 3 does not equal 2. So we never execute the statements in this block of code here. And all that happens is execution jumps down here, and we get that if done is output. And this is a basic if statement. Now, another thing you can do with if statements is you can add else if and else structures to them as well. So we can say here else, and we'll say print f, and we'll say x does not equal to. And what's going to happen now, if we compile this and run this, is that we get x does not equal to, and then if done. So what's going on here is we do a check to see if x is equal to 2. It's still not equal to 2 because it's equal to 3. But what happens is because we have this else block here, it's going to run instead. So else is going to run, the, the, the else block of statements here is going to run if this condition is not true. And that's why we get x is not equal to. And then again, control flow jumps down here after that's done, and we get if done. Now, if we had that x was equal to 2, then, then the else is not going to run, and we'd get that the, the block of code associated with this if here is going to run. And so we'd get x is equal to 2, and then if done. So else is going to run if this condition is not true. And then another thing we can add in is an else if portion of the statement as well. We can add that to this control structure too. So I can say here, else if, and I can say x is equal to 3. And I could print out here, x is equal to 3. And down here, I could say x is not equal to 2 or 3. And so what's going to happen here now is, let's say I set x equal to 3. And I'll just clear this and then run it again here. Oops, I forgot a semicolon. I'll add that in there. And I'll compile it again and run it again. And we get x is equal to 3 and then if done. So what's going on here is I set x equal to 3. And we again do this check. So this check is going to happen. We're going to check does 3 equal 2. It doesn't. So what happens is we jump down to the next conditional, this next else if, in the control structure here. And we check does x equal to 3. Is x equal to 3. And it is equal to 3. So therefore, we execute this block of code here, and then execution jumps down here. Now, if this was not the case, if x does not equal 3, then we, we are going to jump down to this, this else case and run this. And this is, this is kind of like a, a default case. It's kind of like if none of these other conditions hold, then this is the block of code that's going to execute right here. Um, and so we could, we could try that case too. We'll say x is equal to 4 now, and then we'll give it a run. And we get x is not equal to or 3, and then if done. So what happens is, is that the checks happen one at a time. We're going to check, is this condition true? If it is, we run this block of code. If it's not true, we're going to check if this condition is true. 
If it is, we'd run this block of code. Otherwise, we're going to either check another condition or we're going to run the, the else block of code. So we can, we can have multiple else if cases too. So we could say here like else if, and we could add in one more case. We're going to say else if x is equal to 4. And what we could actually do is we could actually, if we've only got one statement here, we could just write it right here. I could just say like print f, and I could say x equals 4. And this is actually okay. So if I've, if I've only got like one statement, I don't need to actually put a, a squiggly bracket and close squiggly bracket to have a block of code. I could just put it right there. And that's actually valid too. So what I've got here now is I've got three things I'm checking. I'm going to check if x is equal to 2. If that's not the case, then we're going to check this condition. If that's not the case, then we're going to check this condition. And if that's not the case, then we're going to go down to the else block. So we'll just give this a run here. We get that x is equal to 4 because it is. If I were to set x equal to 5, then we're going to get that uh, x is not equal to 2 or 3. I guess I should say 2, 3, or 4, but you get the point, right? Uh, 2, 3, 4, we'll say. And, and anyway, so yeah, x is equal to 5 here, and we get that you know none of these conditions here above hold. So that's the, the basic idea with an if, else if, else control structure in C. Now, one thing we should be aware of when we're using these control structures, and I'm just going to delete this example here, and we'll just kind of make another one here. So right now I've got x is equal to 5. And so what I could do here is make an if, else if that's going to check for a bunch of conditions. So we're going to say here if x is, and we'll say, uh, you know, less than 4. And then we'll say print f, and we'll say first condition. Maybe it's a first condition, or just cond, just to keep it shorter here. And then I'm going to say else if x is less than 5, print f, second condition, else if x is less than 6, print f, third condition. And we're going to say else if x is less than 7, print f, fourth condition, and then else, print f, else case. And so what I'm doing here is I just want to illustrate that here we've got x is equal to 5, right? And we have multiple conditions for which they're going to be true, right? Because x is less than 6, because 5 is less than 6. x is less than 7, because 5 is less than 7. So both of these conditions are true. These ones are not true, right? Because like 5 is not less than 4 and 5 is not less than 5. But both of these are true. So just to illustrate the point, let's compile this and see what happens. We only get this third condition. We only get this third check we're doing. We only get that statement executing and not this one. So just, just make sure you understand how that works, that we go along, we check the condition, we check the condition, we check the condition. Now we find that this condition here is true. We print the statement or the block of statements associated with that. And then execution jumps down here. We don't continue to check conditions after that case. And that's just important to understand for when you're writing your programs, just to make sure you can write them correctly without bugs. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.